Welcome to Girls Night In. Today we're talking about Love is Blind. So last night I watched the finale of season six, Love is Blind, and I loved it. I loved every second. Maybe it's because I could watch it in two times speed on Netflix, and maybe it's because every person on the show was a dumpster fire, I don't know, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm so excited to share with those of you who maybe didn't watch it, what happened, and just gossip with those of you that have already seen it. I love when we get up in the comments like, yes girl, period, I agree, or sometimes it's like, like, I hate you, die bitch, I disagree with you. I love when that happens. And of course, I'm making a cocktail to go with this. Let's get into episode one. Basically, we're setting up the premise. There's a bunch of girls and a bunch of boys and the girls can see each other and the boys can see each other, but the girls and the boys are all mixed and matched on blind dates where they can't see each other. And so right out the gate, my bro Matthew comes in with like a list of questions he asks each girl. And this stood out to me because he's like, pick a number. And then all the girls pick a number and he asks the corresponding question. And I remember thinking at first, like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. He's a man with a plan. You don't have to ask the questions. He already knows what to do. I like that about him. But then <laughs> he starts telling the girls, he's like, you know what? It's actually really boring because a lot of girls have picked that question. Do you want to pick a different one? To me, that's tacky. And then one girl's telling him, and I think this is just an edit situation, but he literally walks out while she's responding to the question. He gets so bored. This guy is like super shredded. He like has a job. So to me, Matthew began as Endgame. And then as soon as he walked out while that girl was answering the question, I was like, oh, okay, maybe not Matthew. There's Jessica, who is a single mom and she's like hot. She's so mill. She's like obsessed with Jimmy. And Jimmy is just like a total chud. He's just the most average looking dude. He seems nice enough, but I feel like raise your standards. Like just because he's nice and has a job does not mean he is Endgame, you know? He's just so schmaverage and all the girls are like obsessed with Jimmy. I'm just gonna go through the main cast. I'm totally going in a random order. Okay, you've got Brittany, who's 25. She's just super sweet, Christian, like Southern girl. Then of course we've got AD. AD is a real estate broker. She's 33. She's serving main character. She's like hot. She has a big personality. She is like made for reality TV. And in my opinion, she's totally just here to get famous. And I think she's one of the few people that that plan will actually work for. I really don't know why people go on reality TV to get famous anymore. It's like, honestly, you could have saved yourself a lot of time and embarrassment by just like hosting on Instagram, you know? Most reality TV stars don't end up making good money off of social media. I should know. I used to like work in this stuff and like people aren't like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna hire the cast of season 10 Survivor to promote this new product. Nobody's like that. So if your plan is to go on Love is Blind to get famous, you might be famous for like four weeks and then it's over for you and you might get some brand deals, but I don't think you're gonna be like rich, you know? Then we've got Chelsea. She's 31 and she's an event planner. She's really dramatic, but she's like, whatever. She's nice, I think. Sarah Ann, 30, customer support manager. In the beginning, I honestly thought she was just kind of like fade in the background, like nothing character. She was boring. She is kind of cringeworthy. Oh, I almost cut off my finger. Then we have Laura, who's 34, who's an account director. Unpopular opinion, I really like her. She has like a really strong, like weird, pushy personality. But for me, I'm like, yeah, you should be on a dating show because she has a unique personality that a lot of guys can't handle. So she's great for TV, okay? And she probably does have a hard time dating because she's a lot, but I like that she's a lot, okay? Amy, who's 28, who works in e-commerce. She's just like really nice. She's very good natured, nice girl energy. Amy is just so mellow. I love her. Now onto the men. We've got Matthew. He's 37. He's a senior financial advisor. Like I was talking about at first, you're like, okay, this is daddy end game. And then you're like, oh, this is Patrick Bateman. He's like scary vibes. Kenneth is 26 and a middle school principal. In the beginning, I was like, oh my gosh. He's like, I think he was like 24, 25. And he's already got his life set up. Like he's a principal at that age. Like, okay. He like knew exactly what he wanted. He had like a standard set and he was so sweet and mature. I just loved him. I already talked about Jimmy, but Jimmy is 28. He works in software and he's just a chud, not even a Chad. A chud is like a less hot Chad. The chud is like the wannabe Chad. Like Jimmy is not a Chad. Like he's like Chad light. We've got Clay who is 31 and an entrepreneur. Right from the get go, I could tell you red flag. He is so hot and it sounds like he makes a lot of money. So I like that. And I like that he owns his own business and he's passionate about that. But every other thing about his personality, red flag. Like he tells on himself right from the beginning. Uh-uh. Stay away. I would be like, get out of here as quick. 
with a knife. Oh my gosh, maybe not with a knife. Then there's Trevor, who's 31 and a project manager. Now that is a Chad. But actually he's like so like engulfed in the muscles that maybe it's surpassed Chad. Because it's like you take the gym clearly to another level that's more serious than a Chad would, you know? He has a really cute personality, but I'm just gonna spoil it. Apparently he had a girlfriend while he filmed and I'll show the screenshots right before he got his phone taken away. And then right after he got it back, he was texting this girl. And the girlfriend comes out and she's done it like I think she's even done interviews talking about how they were literally supposed to get married like all of his text messages to and from with her were like baby I can't wait to get out of here and marry you after just know I'm gonna be thinking about you when I'm going on dates with other women and going on a honeymoon with other women I'm gonna be thinking about you the whole time baby it's about you baby and I'm like what is wrong with you? This is what I'm saying. Is this seriously his play for social media clout? Like, are you that desperate? Oh my God, just post a reel on Instagram, you freak. Like, what was his move? I don't even think he has a business. If he's a project manager, he's working for somebody else. So is he like trying to start like a gym supplement sort of bullshit? Next, we've got Jeremy, who's 32. He is intra logistics, whatever that is. I really was rooting for Jeremy. Now, I just thought he was like so sweet. He had the best, most like playful, bantery personality and the way he spoke about the women was just like perfect, you know? Like he just really did it for me. I was like, okay, Jeremy, a lot of these men are great picks. Like as you're hearing me say this, like I thought a lot of the women were really sweet, really cool girls and a lot of the men, I was like, how fun that we're just gonna watch like normal people fall in love. Neat, I was that dumb. This is a good pineapple. Then we've got Johnny, 28, account executive. This is just like the sweetest man. I don't know very many things about you, but I just like you. You just pass the vibes, you know? So that's your cast roundup. Jessica and Jimmy instantly hit it off and you think they might be end game, but then Jessica's like, I don't know when I'm supposed to tell him that I have a 10 year old and she kind of waits too long and then she drops that bomb on Jimmy and he just like doesn't really know how to respond. Jimmy, like I said, chud, he just kind of is like, Good, 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 good. Damn. Oh, okay. No problem. His response was supportive, but it wasn't the response that she wanted. Basically, immediately after that, Jimmy goes on a date with Chelsea. Chelsea is like, I have something really, really important that I need to tell you. I was once divorced. And Jimmy is just kind of like silent. She just takes that as like a rejection. I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna throw up. I knew you hated me. I knew this wasn't gonna work out. She just freaks out. She freaks out and basically leaves. But I don't think Jimmy really cares. He's like, okay. AD finds herself in a love triangle with Matthew and Clay. And everybody's shocked that she's into Clay because she goes and tells the other girls and the other girls are like, you're the hottest one here and you want the worst guy here? What? All the girls are shook, but they're also so stoked on it because they're like, yes, I don't have to compete against her. Not that they're competing but you know what I mean. Clay is just smooth talking, typical fuck boy. She knows that he's dangerous, but she's going in for it. She's like, whatever, this is always what I do. This is always the mistake I make, but I'm doing it again. So she hits it off with Clay and Clay right off the bat is like trying to get her to tell him what she looks like. He's like, I don't know if I could do this. Looks are really important to me. And she's like, why? This is the whole point of the show. Like, I'm not gonna tell you what I look like. Like it's called love is blind, not love. I will have a sort of idea of what you look like that makes me want to marry you you know matthew at the same time is in a love triangle with ab and some other girl named amber i didn't even introduce her because she leaves like immediately and there's no drama ab is in the pods conversing with the girls and she's really feeling it for matthew and she finds out that amber is being told the same things like right off the bat matthew is love bombing both these girls like let's get out of here immediately and get married like creepy like he's like if you want to leave the pods and go get married today i will do that with you baby girl ab and amber kind Kind of match their stories up and Amber's like, fuck this, I'm leaving. AD admits to Clay that she also was speaking to Matthew, but it's kind of over because he does the weird stuff. And Clay is so funny because he's like, you're into Matthew? Because Matthew is so weird in like the boys room when they're together. He's like so freaking like doesn't speak to anybody. Like he's over in the corner reading a book. There's one point where somebody's like, hey, do you want a sandwich, bro? And he's like, no. Right off the bat, Amy and Johnny are falling in love and they are so cute. Episode 
episode two is where we get this iconic Megan Fox moment. Chelsea's in the pods talking to Jimmy and she's like, well, some of my friends have told me that I look like Megan Fox. I think her eyes look like Megan Fox and her lips look like Megan Fox. Nothing else really, but I really feel bad for her that she's gotten the hate. Cause I could see people tell me I look like Selena Gomez, but I don't go around being like, well, some people would say that I look like 2014 Selena Gomez. So <laughs> they also tell me I look like Brett Cooper, but I wouldn't introduce myself to my blind husband like that. I just feel bad for her that the internet flamed her so hard because she's a very insecure girl. And you can tell from basically the way she carries herself, the way she interviews, the way she has conversations, even the way she literally walks. So for the whole internet to come at her and be like, you're an ugly bitch, keep Megan Fox's name out of your mouth is just like crazy. Kenneth and Britney hit it off immediately and you just love both of them. You're like, okay, this is what I think of when I think of people who live in Charlotte. Yes, they're so cute. They're like little like Jesus people. They are like set up in their career. They have similar goals. Like I just loved them together. Matthew calls himself America's underdog. He thinks he's going to win back AB because he is America's sweetheart underdog and everybody loves him. Boy, was he wrong. He has his whole sobbing speech and then he leaves to go get Amber even though he just told AD, like I never told Amber anything. I don't love her, I love you. So bro, you are so full of shit. I'm sure he's not even leaving to go get Amber. He probably has some secret hookup that he's leaving for. I have in my notes that I love Jeremy because he's dating Sarah Ann and Laura at the moment and talking to them, he's like, yeah, I have a four bedroom house. I'm like set up, but there are his ex fiance came out on Facebook and posted a picture of them together and was like, oh yeah, that house he's bragging about used to be mine and we sold it two weeks before he went on the show. I gotta blend this. This isn't juice per se, but I'm not gonna do like stupid straining it through cheesecloth. So this is what you get. Episode three, Johnny and Amy get engaged. They are just slaying, love them. Play apologizes for having his baby crying meltdown because AB chose to also have feelings for Matthew. Sarah Ann comes out as a Trumpy and I think this is where Jeremy decides that he's gonna pick Laura because he's like, ooh, the way she starts talking about it, he just kind of like recoils. Kenneth proposes to Britney, we love them. Jessica spills her heart out to Jimmy. She lays it all on the line, which to me is absolutely wild. She was giving him like old letters, like calling him her husband. It was a lot. She was in it. Then Chelsea does the same thing. And again, it's really awkward. Then Trevor spills his guts to Chelsea. And you're like, oh my gosh. Okay, Trevor. Chelsea, you if you were smart, you would pick Trevor because clearly Jimmy has one foot in, one foot out, but Trevor is all in for you. And this is what we thought before we knew that he had a girlfriend at home, okay? It's hard giving you so many sides of the story when I know so many. Trevor is literally just bleeding his heart out to her and she's like, Okay. Episode four, Jeremy tells Laura that he's falling for her. And at this point I was like, yes, I love them both. Clay proposes to AD and she accepts. To me, this is crazy because he was having a tantrum in the last episode. And part of the reason he's proposing is because he thinks that she has broadened his horizons and changed him as a person just because a single time he had a baby fit and she told him he was being a dick. And he thinks this is like personal growth. Throughout the series, a recurring theme is that Clay thinks that this series has like changed him as a man and been empowering to him because one time he got called out on his bullshit. Kenneth and Brittany leave the pod, slay. We get another scene of Trevor telling Chelsea that he loves her and Chelsea literally says, I, I, I. Finally, Jimmy curves Jessica because I think it just gets too real for him and he's like, ugh, and the kid and you're like being really heavy handed with your emotions, it's too much. And Jessica chooses to tell him the fuck off. She's like, clearly you are getting to the conclusion that you didn't like me. Why did you let me read that letter to you on national television. Ooh. Now, Laura is a lot and she's kind of a drama starter. She, she hears from Chelsea that Jimmy basically picks Chelsea. And so Laura goes to Jessica and she's like, baby girl, you need to leave before he dumps you. Just leave on your own terms. And that's like confusing because these are kind of strangers. Like how do you trust that she's not just fucking with you? So Jessica's kind of sus about it. She doesn't like, she kind of wants to find out for herself. I just think it's weird that Laura inserted herself, but I can also see how like if that were my best friend, I would want that support. 
I don't know. We also get Jessica's iconic leaving line when she goes, when you see me, you are going to choke. You are going to be gasping for air because I am so hot. Which is true, because she really is so hot. So I don't know, Jimmy. Um, I think that stuck with him too, because he definitely is into looks. And I'm not saying that Chelsea is bad looking, but I don't think she's his type. She actually kind of looks like him. So I think every time he was like disappointed by Chelsea, he thought of Jessica. So it was like really bad for their relationship. Episode five is really intense because Trevor is like, Jimmy and I were both gonna ask for Chelsea's hand in marriage and may the best man win. <laughs> Jimmy asks first, gets it. Chelsea goes into the pod with Trevor and is like, I am not interested. And Trevor like puts on a show. For being a man who wasn't interested in getting married and didn't want to actually do the show, had a girlfriend at home, he really did a full on sob story for her. He's like, just tell me, what was it that went wrong? What did you not like about me? Dude, she clearly likes Jimmy better. You have to be an idiot. Like if he really was just doing the show for clout, then he wanted that desperate edit that some people will be like, aw, he really loved her. He is just such a freaking like, try hard. Like, you know, he said he loves the notebook and butterflies. When guys that I'm dating tell me that they like stereotypical, like girlfriend activities, to me, that's always a red flag because I'm like, who taught you to say that you like the notebook? Or like when they like know a little bit too much about how to put on a good date. Like they like, I had a boyfriend that would like bring out a guitar on dates and like sing to me, could not sing. But every time it made me nauseous, I would pick off my acrylics because it would make me so anxious because it was so embarrassing. But like in his head with girlfriends he'd had or like movies and and stuff he was like this is how you reach the end zone and it's just too rehearsed that it's like a red flag you you know what i mean so trevor is totally in denial and is like maybe she'll change her mind and come back weird jeremy dumps sarah ann proposes to laura jimmy and chelsea get their big reveal where they see each other and chelsea oh i feel so bad for her because her outfit is heinous and she's so uncomfortable that she runs out like a t-rex she's like Yay! And he like looks like he's like cringing. He's like, oh, this is not Megan Fox. I don't know if he was just anxious or if that's actually what went through his head. I don't know. I think Chelsea is pretty, but he looks like a deer in the headlights. And why did she have to run out like that? The producers did her dirty, especially when they like cut the music. It's so awkward. Ugh. Literally, he starts just like rambling at her and like talking, going through his emotions. And she is already like, bro, what the fuck? Do you even like me? What's going on here? Can you explain what's going on here i'm really uncomfortable because she is super super needy but also i feel like he's not giving her the security that she needs we get the jeremy and laura reveal and they are both into each other and it's fine seeing those two back to back makes chelsea and jimmy look real bad jeremy is kind of cringy too as soon as they see each other and hug jeremy starts being kind of cringy and laura's like oh you weren't like this in the pods why are you being weird <laughs> we get to see them go on their honeymoon bed and it's so uncomfortable like why are they filming them actually in their beds in their hotel rooms Ugh, i hate it. It makes me so uncomfortable. I just feel like I'm not supposed to be watching this. Like, please, Love is Blind producers, cut that shit out. At one point, she asks him, what would you do if I got fat? This is a question that I also like to ask my significant other. And Clay says, I'd get you up in that gym, bitch. And I was like, what a delicate way to answer this question. Wow. Chelsea and Jimmy are just being so cringeworthy. They just aren't a good fit. It's weird. All the engaged couples go on a group date and Chelsea and Jimmy are very insecure. So Chelsea, to combat this, starts bragging to everybody about Jimmy's dick, about their sex, about their relationship. And Jimmy's like, oh yeah, Chelsea's the best one here. We have the best relationship here. We are solid. Brittany and Kenneth are so cute. He's like taking her shoes, pulling out chairs. Like he is like, it seems like his mama raised him well. And they're the only ones not being weird with the other couples. Cause you gotta keep in mind, these are people that they just dated. So it's like really weird. But then Jimmy makes a comment about 80s body looking good. And Chelsea Chelsea takes this to the next level. She like yells at AD and like makes it like a whole thing in front of everybody and is like, Jimmy was just saying that you look really hot, that your bod is nice and tight. Yeah, girl. And they just like both like make it so uncomfortable. And then instead of just ending it there, Jimmy goes over to AD and has like a long conversation. I get that part of it was to try and like gloss over how awkward that was and like have a conversation for it to be less uncomfortable between them. But still, I was like, everything about this is wrong and weird. Like seriously, throughout this group activity, all the couples are like, are you guys happy? Are you good? And Jimmy's like, I'm actually the happiest one here. We're doing the best of anybody here. So don't even question it. Laura like weirdly flicks AD's boob or something and then drags uh, Jeremy into it. And it becomes this whole thing. And Jeremy's pissed 
pissed because he thinks that Lara made him look bad. So he like storms out and leaves for the night. And Lara's pissed at Jeremy because she thinks Jeremy embarrassed her. I think they're both embarrassing and that was such a weird situation. I honestly couldn't even follow the chain of events that happened because it was so confusing and weird. AD approaches Kenneth and because he is in a relationship with Brittany who was white, she goes up to him and she's like, something to consider is that your babies with her are going to be black and she has never known that experience before. I'm not deterring you, just consider would she be able to handle that and do that in a sensitive way. I don't think it's her place considering she doesn't know Kenneth, but also I don't think I can say much about that. So I don't know, I just felt like it was overstepping for not knowing either of them and it was kind of weird. I don't know, sue me. But as soon as she says that, Kenneth starts withdrawing big time from Brittany. He like, night and day difference in their relationship. Lara and Jeremy have a weird relationship after that boob flicking joke and it's, they, they fight about it, it's weird. Chelsea and Jimmy are fighting and let me tell you the basis of every single fight. Chelsea asks for security and attention and Jimmy denies it, that's it. I don't really know what I'm doing here but it looks like I'm making some sort of like compote that could go in something and be good, right? What I'm really making is a sticky mess. Kenneth ends up bringing that discussion to Brittany talking about how they would raise children who are not white. Kenneth brings the discussion to Brittany and they talk about how she could raise children of color. And honestly, I feel like it went well. I, I thought they were in the green zone after this, but Jeremy and Lara apologize to each other for that weird, I, I don't, again, so confusing and weird. Kenneth and Brittany go on a date and it's so uncomfortable because they're like laying on a boat and he's like totally just like, and she's really giving it her all. She feels the distance, so she's going extra hard. She's like asking him questions, like trying to get him involved, and he's just totally aloof. Clay starts telling AD, like, I will disappoint you someday. And he starts doing this bullshit of like, cheating is in my genetics. My dad cheated, so now I'm gonna be a cheater. And I'm so sorry, and I'll try to work past it, but it's just kind of the way I'm built. Bro, what? Jeremy apologizes to AD and gives her advice on being around Clay, which is like weird, but she actually is like, thank you, I needed it. That's a good sign that you shouldn't be getting married, right there. Jeremy says that he wants to meet up with Sarah Ann and give her closure and talk about why he dumped her. Now that is the biggest red flag if I've ever seen one. Amy and Johnny are just honestly a stable, happy-go-lucky, awesome couple, but I think they wanted to make it on the show, so they are just inventing drama throughout the series. Like first it's like, I'm worried about my parents not liking him, and then it's like, we're worried about doing the nasty because she's not on birth control, and he's really nervous about, okay, I am so sick of seeing people analyze this on wherever the fuck, they clearly just needed a plot to be on the show, okay? It, none of it is real. That, I promise you, maybe like 1%, they were like, oh shit, uh, I don't know if I trust the pullout method. And then that was it. But for the show, they just like made it big. Lara and Jeremy move into their weird, uh, like random set house together. And Lara lays down the law for Jeremy. She's like, I do not like messes. I do not like dishes in the sink. I do not like this, this, and this. And he's like, totally, I can do that. And she's shocked because she's never Never had a man be like clean and adult before, so she's super stoked on that, which I thought would make them such a cute couple. Ken and Brittany are moving into the pretend house together and literally Brittany's doing all the work and Kenneth is just like on his phone, which I get it. If I had to spend three weeks away from my phone, I would be like stressing all on it, especially principal, like totally. But it's it's very clear that the intention is not to catch up, it's just to ignore her. He just decides that he hates her. He's not even like courteous to her. He's just like, and she's doing all the work. She's like, how are you? What can I do for you? He's like, make me dinner. Girl, what? And she does, she's like babying him, trying everything to get his attention and he is out of it. He's out, he's not doing it. Jeremy and Laura move from the pretend house to go check out each other's homes and we get to Jeremy's home and it cracks me up because the whole premise was Laura being like, I am a clean freak. And then we get to Jeremy's house and it's even cleaner than hers and it's even cleaner than what she was describing and she's like, you out cleaned the clean freak. She was being so annoying about it that I loved how it just like silenced her on the issue. It was so funny. Finally, Brittany and Kenneth get together and they decide it's just not going to work. But in this conversation, he's literally on his phone. He's such an asshole to her. He's like, well, you know what? I think you're overanalyzing if you don't think I'm giving you enough attention. And she's like, I'm just like trying to figure out what's wrong between us. Clearly something's not right. And he's like, well, I tried to get laid at 1.30 last night and you weren't in the mood. And she's like, I had to wake up at five. And he's like, yeah, then I guess we should just break up. Bro, what?
Chelsea meets up with her friends and she tells them that Jimmy ended up finding pictures of Jessica. And again, Chelsea is so insecure. I feel so bad for her, but clearly this freaks her out because in her head, Jessica is very competitive for her. It stresses her out. Chelsea and Jimmy talk about how they want to move into Jimmy's studio apartment. Let me tell you from experience, moving into a studio apartment with another person is the worst possible idea. Anyway, I'm not even gonna get into that. Just like their relationship is already damned, but let me tell you, if they moved into a studio apartment together, they wouldn't last three days. Chelsea starts freaking out on Jimmy because she finally lets loose on the fact that he knows what Jessica looks like. And he just ends up telling her, baby girl, you're too clingy. Would you never say that to a woman? I'm sorry. Obviously they freak out and they have another fight. Jimmy admits that he had sent Jessica a friend request, but then withdrew it. Oh, I would be so pissed. I would be pissed too. So people saying that Chelsea's doing too much. Oh my God. If he sent a friend request to his ex, I mean, he did withdraw it. So he does have the conscience, but it's clear that like that's the innate desire, right? So then we find out that Sarah Ann, this is Jeremy's ex, had sent a friend request and a long message to Jeremy, just basically being like, if you change your mind and want to explore, I'll always be here. And he likes the message, but doesn't respond. Laura freaks the fuck out about this. Now I think liking it is fine because it's like, if you open it, there's no going back. It's gonna say seen. So liking it, I think is a way to be like, I'm not just a douche who left you on red, but like, I hear you. I don't think liking it is the worst thing in the world. I think she freaked out, but I know this is different for everyone. And they probably didn't have a boundary set on that because who would? And Jessica will not get over Jimmy. Like girl, you are so out of his league. It's unreal. She is still pining after him. And what's funny is that Lara, who is having the same thing happen to her is like, you know what girl, you should just go wreck that home. It's fine. Girl, what? Episode nine, Lara's family meets Jeremy and Lara is clearly so salty. I wonder if she like already knew that things were falling apart because in front of her family, she's just dunking on him over and over again. She's being such a bitch. She even brings up the message thing and that he liked it. And the family's so uncomfortable. They're like, eh, you're kind of being a bitch about this girl. Like, it's like, why do you hate him so much? And I don't know if this was for the plot or what, but basically she's like, he just wears Hawaiian shirts and he's like really cringy and I don't like him. So everybody's like, you're being really harsh. Um, I'm assuming there was more that was falling apart that she didn't know because that reaction just isn't right. Or she really is kind of a bitch, I don't know. But then we get the big drama. Lara, this is like days after he meets her family. Lara approaches him and is like, so you went to the bar last night, right? And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry I was out so late. Things just like were crazy, but I was just at the bar and came home. And she's like, Oh, were you? And he's like, what do you mean? And she's like, so you weren't with any women who are Sarah Ann? And he's like, no. She's like, well, what if I told you I saw your location? I think people are saying it's because he was wearing an Apple watch and he literally was at Sarah Ann's house until five in the morning. He literally, there's no going back on that. That's like clear. And he's like, okay, fine. He's breadcrumbing her on his lies. What an asshole. He basically says like, I'm still loyal to you, baby girl. I just wanted to close things off with Sarah Ann. She needed a ride home and we just talked about things and now we have have closure so I can marry you. And he just expects her to be okay with that. Like, are you out of your mind? Things are clearly over and done times a hundred million. This is clearly a done deal, goodbye. He even goes to his mom and his mom is like, you totally cheated. You're even lying to me about it. I can tell you cheated, you're a dick. Then we meet Jimmy's family and they're so cute and they are really rooting for Jimmy and Chelsea. They're like, wow, you are the missing piece to our family. We love you, Chelsea. We're feeling good about both of them for once. But then of course they have another fight because Jimmy went out to the bar and he only went for like an hour and she freaks out. But on TikTok, everybody is really divided on this because you can't get mad at your man for going to a friend's birthday party that you were invited to, especially if it's just for an hour. Can't be mad about that. But apparently he was there with his best friend who is a girl who apparently he's texting all day, every day, who he also has a sexual history with. Okay, that I would be pissed about. And I wouldn't be able to have peace of mind about it. Like no wonder she's always freaking out. She's insecure. And the guy she's marrying has a best friend who he has a history with. Like of course, but to be fair, at one point, Chelsea was like, oh, I love that you're friends with your exes. I'm like totally friends with all my exes. Clearly that was a lie. She was just trying to be the cool girl. Again, she was just insecure and she was like, no, 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 I totally get that. I'm totally cool. I have no problems. I'm totally chilling. That always backfires on you. One piece of advice, never be cool. Then there's like a barbecue party where all the cast members get a hang. Laura and Jeremy are splitsville, but they both show up. So there's intensity between them. Laura tells all the girls what went down and all the girls 
girls are of course on her side, but then Sarah Ann and Jeremy are totally putting it on for each other. AD settles the score. I love her for this. She approaches Sarah Ann and she's like, you know that shit you did was not cool, right? Texting him like the door is open whenever you want, come visit me, like whatever, blah, 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 blah. Sarah Ann denies this and AD is just like, okay, well I've seen them, so there's not much you can do about that. After she gets confronted by AD, Sarah Ann decides that she is the martyr, the victim of all, and she runs away to Jeremy and is like, everybody's so mean to me. It's not even my fault that I'm just hot and likable and all the boys like me. I just tried to be a good friend, but you know what? I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to fall in love and I found you and we're in love. Let's hop on these jet skis and right away. They hop on jet skis in front of everybody and just start doing like wheelies. It's so funny. More of the stupid Amy Johnny birth control story. Bored. Cut that shit out. Actually, I like them, so any excuse for them to have screen time is good, but like, come on. That is like the fakest thing I've ever seen. Okay, I need some alcohol for this. BRB. Okay, that was episode 11. Um, and by the way, when Jimmy and Chelsea are like being stable and cool, he like spends the entire episode being like, I am so excited to marry you and make babies with you. You are so my wife. I Pranked! We begin episode 12 with him dumping her ass. That came out of nowhere. He was hyping her up. But you know what? At the same time, I'm really grateful that he didn't wait until the altar to dump her in front of all her family. That would have been a nightmare. However, that happens to somebody else. I knew this was gonna happen because one, Clay has been prepping AD. I'm going to disappoint you. I'm going to cheat you. I am a horrible boyfriend. This entire series. The wedding day comes. The speeches that Clay is having with his parents. His mom's like, you know what? I'll love you no matter what you choose to do to this girl and whatever happens. I, I'm on the fence about if AD was acting or actually thought this was real. I, I don't know, she seems so TV, so actory. They both do. Anyway, they both walk down the aisle. They look great. They do vows that are so rehearsed. Now, you guys tell me what you think, but in my experience, normal people have to read their vows because it's like so nerve wracking. It's like kind of uncomfortable to read this in front of everybody. Um, it's a lot of words to have memorized, but they just speak from the heart. To me, that's giving actor. That's giving, I am on this show to get famous and my family kind of knows what's up. I find it hard to believe that this was true for honestly either of them. They do their vows. A do, do you, I do? And she says, I do. And then it gets to be Clay's turn and he goes, I just need you to know that I'm rocking with you, but um, this is a little fast for me, so I don't think it's a good time. At the altar, after she said the vows, the I do, the dress, the every, and he's like, you're not mad at me, are you? I like hate seeing you sad. I don't have to break up though, this isn't the end of us. At the beginning of the series, she said, if we don't make it down the aisle, that's it. But I think she's gonna take it back. I oh, I need to mix this. Um, I've also heard this rumor that the stars get fined $50,000 if they accept a proposal, but they don't make it across the aisle. If that's the case, then I have so much more respect for Jimmy and Kenneth for breaking it off before doing the aisle thing. I just think that can't be the case. There was one girl who said that, and apparently there's a lawsuit that referenced it. I combed through that lawsuit, and I really couldn't find anything that specifically says, if you do not make it across the aisle, you have to pay $50,000. I just find that hard to to believe so definitely let me know what you guys think let's see how'd i do oh that's rough that was a waste of time